Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. Today is going to be an exciting one because we're going to dive into an overview of knowledge management and the knowledge management component of the whole life operating system. So everything we've been doing up until this point is focused largely on project and task management. The project management systems are the most dynamic and complex. Those are the parts that have action items moving through them. They encompass largely the pipelines section of the pillars, pipelines, and vaults organizational system. The knowledge management area resides entirely in the vaults, and that's really the primary function of the vault, is to capture information, turn it into actionable knowledge that informs and fuels the various action-oriented pipelines like tasks and projects and goals, but it stands as a, an independent resource that can be drawn on and pulled from and also a growing living organism in that it's aggregating and it's culminating and it's synthesizing and it's becoming more valuable over time. What you're ultimately creating is a series of vaults that become gold mines, gold mines of informational resources and thoughts and ideas and your best thinking across the topics that matter the most to you. So today's going to be an overview of all of that. Then we're going to do a series of videos that goes deeper into each section. So after the overview, we'll look at the books vault, the media vault, the training and academy vault. Then we'll look at the knowledge lab, which is the ultimate culmination of where all this information and ideas flow into. And we'll look at a notes and ideas database that leverages the best functionality of Notion and applies a real systems thinking approach to integrating notes and ideas collection with all these other vaults and particularly the team vault and the knowledge lab and they'll all have this flow across them so that each will enhance and facilitate the purpose of all the different components and together create a system of knowledge management. Most of what I see out there are individual silos, individual databases that capture either all the information or a certain type, but there isn't a dynamic flow where each enhances the other. And I find for myself, that's what I've developed here is a real systems thinking approach to knowledge capture, knowledge processing, organization, and then knowledge growth and enhancement into a final form that makes it incredibly actionable, but also a living, breathing organism that's always improving itself as the system flows across this whole vault section. So that's what we're gonna dive into the overview today. And then we're going to go deeper into each section in the videos that follow this one. So as always, feel free to leave any thoughts or questions below. Happy to expand on it below. Although of course we'll be going deeper in future videos. And as always, if you wanna expand the conversation beyond these specific topics of these videos, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. So with that, let's dive in. So starting from the command center, we're going to jump over to the mind expansion area. The mind expansion dashboard is housed here at the top of the growth category, but I actually have a demo one set up to show the system in its full detail without opening up my personal notation system. So this is the mind expansion demo board. We've got three categories here. The top two are inputs and the bottom is sort of the aggregation and culmination of all of this input process flow. So the first is notes and ideas, which are my own inputs, my own thoughts, my reflections, extracts I take from conversations I have with people. If you're working on a team in a team context with a business, then this would be the inbox of the entire team. All the members thinking and ideas and their own interpretations would all be entered here. Knowledge sources are, as is implied, books, the media vault, which captures articles, videos, podcasts, thoughts, and notes. And then the academy, which is courses and training, any formal training, online training, or schooling that you're doing. It's a place to capture all that knowledge and it organizes all of this very efficiently here. And then it all flows into the knowledge creation and aggregation category into the knowledge lab itself. So I'm gonna flow through all this at a very high level and we'll dive deeper in subsequent videos. Each of these is a vault of its own and they exist in the vault category here. So the book vault, the media vault, the training vault, the knowledge lab will all be in there. All right, so opening this up so we can see it a little better. I'm gonna to, going to go through the middle section first, then show you the knowledge creation hub and then we'll jump back to how the thought inbox operates in the context of everything else because everything else is a bit more traditional. So the library is where books are stored and captured. It's also where the, my reading list is developed. So we've got this whole database organized and sorted by status primarily and then priority. Reading are the books I'm actively reading right now. Next read means the ones that I have queued up and most want to read next in line. Then the more general to read 
section here and then finished. So books finished. So this is a demo. I've stripped a lot out. Typically this will be a much bigger list and then you'd have a whole bunch of different sorts. One for two reads, one for reading and one for finished. So you wouldn't have to scroll through a giant list but I wanted to be able to scroll down and just show how they all sort together and how they all fit with each other. But finished becomes a gold mine of information and knowledge because as you're reading, you are taking notes and I'm gonna show you when we get into the book vault video, which is the one that should follow this one, how I do my hierarchical highlighting system, which is a powerful way to quickly capture and organize and prioritize information that you're capturing from the books. So one of two ways to capture notes from the books, one is just to highlight and then ideally have some form of hierarchical highlighting so you can put emphasis of greater or lesser weight on the different highlights. And I think you need more than two gradients. So this progressive summarization method you may have seen among the second brain crowd is just way too limited in my opinion. You need, you need more nuance in the way that you highlight and prioritize your notes. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So highlighting is one way to very effectively capture the most important information from the books you read. The other way is to summarize in your own words and to take notes in your own words. Now, taking notes in your own words is way more effective. It will commit it to memory more. You'll internalize it. You'll understand it better, but it takes more time. So it's always a trade-off. With books, I will make a decision up front how important the book is. If it's something I just want to be exposed to the ideas and get through it quickly, then I'll often make it an audio book. Now, usually I have, I've indicated here the format, whether it's Kindle, print, or audio. I usually have two audio books underway at a time and two to three, either print or Kindle books. I prefer Kindle over print just because you can highlight and put notes in much more effectively, but some books only exist in print. And there's some value to print. I mean, there's nothing wrong with print if you prefer that. Just have a good notation system. And then you're going to be relying more on typing your own notes, which is really ideal if you're willing to commit the time to it. So we're going to go deeper into this whole vault in the next video. So I'll leave it at that for now. The media vault is how we capture articles. I've been mostly using it for articles. Again, this is a very limited database for the sake of demo, but I'll have an even much bigger one. And it goes all the way down through my to-do list, my the ones I'm reading now, the ones I plan to do, and then a priority of the ones that have not been read, and then the ones that are finished. The ones that are finished is just like the book vault, a gold mine of knowledge already extracted and either highlights with various degrees of nuance and hierarchy in the highlighting, or my own notes which extract even more knowledge and I will recall and remember more. Everything I'm reading that is of value is having knowledge extracted and organized in such a way that I can revisit it later, easily access it and remind myself of what the value was. So you're setting up a learning system that is ongoing and a knowledge base that you can tap into very quickly and efficiently without, of course, having to read the whole article again. Now, I do have this set up. I have a, a podcast here, I have a video here. I intend to be more active at highlighting and noting information from videos and from podcasts. I've been less active in that regard so far, but it's definitely, this is the vault where that would be done. And of course, in Notion, you can embed videos and podcast audio right in there just as you're extracting an article. For articles, I'm relying very heavily on the Notion Web Clipper. When I get into the Media Vault, I'll show you how I use the Web Clipper. Then we have the, the Training Vault, which is for courses and instructional programs of any kind. I used to do a lot of courses. I find them extremely valuable. I don't do them, do many of them anymore. I just do some short, quick, easy ones right now in some very targeted areas. This is an incredible way to learn. If you find the right course, it can change your life. These courses can be super transformational. Sure, you can search all over the place and find the bits and pieces if you're willing to spend endless hours, but course organizers who do it right, the ones who make the best courses, will distill the information and create a program that is so much more effective than just trying to piece it together. So I definitely recommend courses, even though I'm not that active in, in them anymore, but this is the place you would capture all the learning from them. So in each one, you'd open it up, and while the Media Vault in the library would have you know, a string of text and some highlighting and some note taking and summarization, these, the notes would be far more extensive, especially if it's a really big course. You would basically build a dashboard in the workspace under the database fields. And then the dashboard would open into sub pages and toggle pages. And you create a learning organization for that course where you are really taking all the information that you're learning and putting it down so you can very easily access it at any point in the future. If you're part of a team, you're gonna make that learning organizational structure available to the whole team so everybody can learn from what you picked up in that course. So you really wanna think of these pages as dashboards for the entire course and either organize them by toggles that pop open or sub pages that lay it out so that you have a very organized access to all this information. But this is just sort of a few courses I threw in here as an example 
I when I was doing courses intensively, it was before I was using Notion, so I don't really have my best courses in here laying that all out. But I pulled a few in here to give you a sense of how it would work. But really, once you're taking the course, open it up and in the workspace in there, create a series of subpages and build out and capture all that information as you're absorbing it while taking the course. So later you can skim it and re-energize all that information you learned, bring it back to the forefront of your mind. And by doing that a few times, you're going to internalize it and you're really going to get so much more out of the course. So it's a very powerful way to get more out of these courses, especially since some of them are very expensive. You want to get all that value out of them. And this is the way to do it by having an incredibly organized database and then each page basically being a dashboard into the full learning of the course. And then you're going to capture your own thoughts in the thought inbox in the notes and ideas database. So that's its own database here. This is purely a sample because it's too hard for me to sterilize my own personal note system. So I just thought I'd create a, a sample here so I could show you more fully. What we have here is a database that has categories here if there are various other dashboards, if you're part of a team, these are great because then you can filter by these different departments. I'm envisioning there being a sales team, a marketing team, an HR team, an admin team. And then each of those teams would typically in a business environment have their own dashboard. And then so a filtered view of the notes and ideas of, that everybody's entering across the team would be embedded in those dashboards. So you'd have a constant running stream of notes and ideas from across the team. Now, if you're doing it on your own, it could be different interest activities. So say you're an avid skier and you have your own skiing or or recreation or sports dashboard. You could have designations for thoughts on your sports and fitness, designations on family, designations on social life, and then in any context, anywhere else in your Notion system, you could have a filtered view of all the notes and ideas relevant specifically for that context. The key to an effective notes and ideas system is that they're easy to enter. Just when you have a spontaneous thought or idea, you can quickly enter it. And I'll show you various points of entry for quick entry in, our, in the system. And then you want it to resurface at the right time in the right place. And I'm going to show you how this really facilitates a comprehensive system across the whole knowledge management process where the, the right information resurfaces at the right time. So that's what we're going to get to in a moment. So across this, we're going to so we're going to do a much deeper look at this whole thing. I just wanted to show it to you briefly. We've got relational links to the Knowledge Hub, we've got relational links to the Media Vault and the books. Now these are going to be the sources. So typically there'll be one, if any, of these two. But if the idea or thought or note came from a book, then you'll note that as the source here. If it came from an article or a video or a podcast, you'll note that as the source here. And you'll link it if it exists in the Media Vault or in the Book Vault, you'll link that relation. But most importantly, you're linking to the Knowledge Hub, which we're going to get to in a moment. And then this is filtered by status is active. You have the option to make them inactive because at some point some notes become less relevant. Uh, you, if you're working on a team, you want it filtered by me. I'll explain why when I do the video specifically on this. And you want to sort them. I think it's most effective to do it by last edited. So this is, we're going to do it by the last edited date. The date it was let this entry in the database was last touched or modified. And then you want this particular view to be the past week. So you have access to any of the notes you've entered in the past week, easily accessible. Usually after a week, you're not going to go back and revisit it as just by remembering it. At that point, you want it to resurface in the right time in the right place. And that's what we're going to look at next. But if you want to go back to a note that you recently worked on, this is helpful because it'll have the recent ones. And then you're sorting them by last edited date in most cases. So it's in order of most recent. So it's easy to go back and find. That's most recent that it's been touched or modified in any way. I also have it alphabetically sorted here as an option and the creation dates. So if for some reason that's easier to find, all you do, since it's already created, just drag it up and it'll resort. So instead of having to create a new sort field, you just choose the one that you like. If you want an alphabetical, you go there. If you want it last edited, which I find is the most useful, you do that. So we're going to get more into this in a whole video dedicated to this, but just wanted to give you a glimpse. We're going to do a whole video on the Knowledge Lab. This is where the magic happens. So you're capturing all this information through your personal inputs and through these different sources. All of these are defined by the source type. So notes and ideas are defined by you or your team members as the source, libraries by books, articles, courses are all defined by source. Knowledge Lab is different. Knowledge Lab is defined by the topic category. So these are areas that I'm actively interested in and in some way building knowledge deliberately in these categories. So I'm looking for articles on these categories. I'm looking to get smarter and better and more knowledgeable about all these different categories, either for business or my personal life. So they're defined by the category. So we, I'll just show you some examples. We got community building, course creation, design thinking, discipline, discipline as the commitment to do what you tell yourself you're going to do. That's a, a big category and I want to learn how to be better at that. My most recent couple of 
newsletter articles address topics surrounding that. So that was really informative for writing those newsletter articles. Divergent and convergent thinking, fitness, so I'm learning how to enhance my fitness program. And all that information is being collected and organized in this entry. I've got goal setting, how to become better at goal setting. So I'm learning and reading and aggregating information on how to be better at goal setting, how to improve my habits and routines, marketing, all kinds of stuff, metacognition, the discipline of thinking about thinking and how to reflect on the thought process in deeper and more profound ways, how to create newsletters, best in class practices, nutrition and diet, personal finance, all this stuff is super important stuff for what I'm focused on. So these are all things that are either helping my tasks and projects, helping me improve and learn as a person or helping me do business better. And again, by topic. So in each one, let's take this, We've got this very organized collection of information. As I read books and collect articles and enter things in here, the best pieces from these I'm pulling and I'm pasting into the topic specific category in the Knowledge Vault. So this is the first filter is to capture the whole article or all the book highlights. And then the next level is to take the most valuable information from there and build out a central best thinking, best insight on those topics here. Now these are also linked to other Knowledge Lab entries. So this is the Knowledge Lab. This is a link to others in the same database. So it's referencing the same database. But as you see, design thinking is also highly relevant to systems thinking and system design and divergent and convergent thinking. So as you go into here, you've got those links and you can jump over to systems thinking and to go deeper into that. So we're going to come back to all that when we do a whole video on this. The last thing I just wanted to show you that really starts tying things together, but it's just the beginning. We're going to go deeper in the specific videos is you come in here and as you've got this aggregate down here. So if we open this up, we come down here, we've got a table of contents that'll jump us down very quickly. This is to a lower level within the hierarchy. If you're entering your notes using headings with the H1, H2, H3 setting, which is a format setting turn into, you can choose heading one, two, or three. It'll make them different sizes to organize the hierarchy of the outline organization. If you're doing that, which you should to keep it organized, then whenever you want to have a table of contents, you just do slash TOC it'll enter a table of contents based on that heading structure. So I already had one, but I was just showing you how that slash TOC automatically created a heading. And as you add more headings and categories and subcategories, it will automatically update this. And any of these will take you down to the section that it's linking to. So that's a really powerful feature of Notion. And I love leveraging these table of contents. It just makes the organization and access super effective. And finally, here we have a filter of all the notes and ideas for this specific entry in the Knowledge Lab. This is coming from the Notes and Ideas database. So, so back out here, we have this database up here, which are entering notes and linking to the Knowledge Hub. And so when we're in an entry in the Knowledge Hub, we now have all the notes that were linked to this Knowledge Hub entry. So everything linked to the design thinking that I've entered, as I read books that are related, or as I had conversations or was just reflecting to myself, I came up with these ideas, I quickly entered these notes, and they're all available here. This is how they arise at the right place at the right time. A lot of systems you'll see with notes and ideas will add a time counter. So after a certain cycle of time, 30 days, 90 days, six months, whatever, they'll resurface to the top so that you can revisit them. But that's completely arbitrary. And the odds of them popping up after 90 days at a moment when you need it, it's like almost zero that that's the time you're gonna to wanna to see it. And I don't have time to just arbitrarily review notes I've taken previously or books or articles or anything. I need them when I need them, not at some random arbitrary time. So what happens here is when you choose to go into exploring design thinking, say you need to write an article on design thinking or you're going to give a presentation or you're going to, or you were trying to think of an idea in a conversation earlier and you couldn't remember it. So you want to actually go back and see what the substance behind that thought was. And you know you have it in your design thinking entry. So this is taking your notes and putting them into to the proper context. They're resurfacing automatically in the place where they're relevant. And because you're going to go to that place at the time you need them, the result is they're contextually relevant to both time and place because time is going along with your decision to go back to that location. So by tying them to the right place, the time comes along with it in terms of contextual referencing. And so here, when we wanna dive into design thinking, we come in here, we have all of the notes we've had on design thinking. They're filtered by that self-referencing filter. Of course, this is in a template. So with any new entry in the Knowledge Lab, you're gonna create a new entry based on that template. It's going to automatically create the self-referencing notes and ideas table. It's going to be sorted by last edited in descending order. So 
the most recent first. So that's an easy way to try to find them as the list grows longer. You also have the option to do it alphabetically and all you have to do is drag it to switch it. It's easy to do. Of course, if the list's getting long and it's getting in the way, you just toggle it closed, but you open it up and all those ideas are coming in here and they're available where you need them at the time you go there. So when you need them. So that makes the notes and ideas database super valuable. Then as you organize and design this, and I'm going to talk more about how you make this as powerful as possible, you'll either pull a drag a copy by hitting alt and dragging this down here to the place you want it. It's still, if you hit alt and drag it, it leaves, leaves the original there. So if it's still linked to other things, it doesn't lose its relation by being part of this database. If it's only linked to this one, entry in the knowledge lab, then you might just drag it without hitting alt and it'll remove it. So that removes it altogether. But if you hit alt, it'll drag it and it'll embed a page down here that has all the information with it. And then you have the option to convert it into text if you want to bring that information into the body of the entry here. And so in one way, it's a way of lining up things that need to be organized into the main body. Another is just a quick way to have a quick reference that's easily accessible in a very organized and sorted way at the top of each knowledge lab entry. And so in one way, it's a way of lining up things that need to be organized into the main body. Another is just a quick way to have a quick reference that's easily accessible in a very organized and sorted way at the top of each knowledge lab entry. So that's how you make your notes and ideas resurface contextually at the right time at the right place. The more ways we can use this when we start working across teams and different people are entering notes and you want to have access to the whole team's notes. We're going to talk about that when we look at team use of the Knowledge Lab, which will be a separate video at the end of this four or five video series. But the last thing I want to emphasize is how you make this so you can do quick entries. So first of all, this is largely an entry database here. You're not usually going to access them here unless you're one you remembering it and you wanted to go back to it. Then you'd access it here. But for the most part, you're going to access it when it resurfaces in, in the Knowledge Lab or or in the team member directory if you're not part of a team. But usually it's the knowledge lab where it's going to resurface or on any specialty dashboards for specialty sections of your life, which is when you're going to use this tagging here. This layout was designed more for business use, but it could be personal use and you just call it category without team. And then you'd list the different areas of your life, especially areas that you have dashboards. And then you'll embed filter dashboards for those particular functions. And then this will resurface in those dashboards, which again is the right context for the notes to resurface. But typically this area up here is a quick entry. But in addition to that, I have added this to our command center. So let's go back to the command center here. And I now have this new entry here right at the on ramp to the whole operating system. And I have a notes and ideas box right there. So just as easily I can hit new and enter one here. So that's a great place to make a quick access. But most of the time I'm not spending my day in the command center, though sometimes I do go and jump in there quickly. Most of the day I'm in the action zone. And most of the day in the action zone, after I've done my initial morning startup, I just open the today toggle and I live in the today toggle. This is where I go hour to hour throughout the day, working through my priorities, getting things done, checking off my habit tracker as I go through the day. And now down here, I now have quick access to my notes and idea inbox. So I can very quickly recall or pull up and modify or revisit any of the anything I've entered recently. So this is a set on a filter. Last edited is on or after yesterday. So anything today or yesterday that I've added as a note or idea will be available as a quick access here. Equally importantly, I can hit new right from here because again, I'm spending most of my day here. So I'm right here and then I just hit new and I can add a new one. So new idea and it's I can give it a category if it's related to one of the dashboards that I work in. Otherwise, I can link it to any knowledge hub that is relevant to the idea. It's relevant to product design. So I just added a new idea here. It's sorted by last edited descending. So most recent at the top. So the add idea just added will be right there and each idea add will be here. So the key is just that you link either to a knowledge hub idea or to a topic or category here. Or if you just want to capture something, you can throw it in here if you know you're going to access it soon. But if you're going to capture something that you're going to want to access further down the road than a day or two, you're probably going to forget about it. So you want to link it to a knowledge hub topic or to a category that's relevant to your life. And then in one of those two places, it'll resurface at the right time in the right place. If you don't have anything to link it to, but you're adding an idea that is important, well, that's a cue that you should create one. You should either create a category that's going to be relevant and then ultimately create a destination where everything for that category in your whole system aggregates a dashboard designed for it or create a new knowledge hub category. Just go here, type something new knowledge, and then it gives you the option to create a new page in the knowledge lab. And then it's there for you. And so you can create that on the fly 
if there's a new area you want to start aggregating and collecting information on that you want to get more knowledgeable in and more capable and more have more information at your fingertips in, then you just create it on the fly. And the new idea might spark the creation of that new knowledge hub topic. So that's it. That's how we'd add knowledge management to the whole life operating system. This is a whole module that's plugging in, basically the vault section, plugging in to the pillars and pipeline sections that we've been covering in much more detail. And this is just a quick overview. We're going to go into depth into each section and I'll show you more about how to build them and get the most functionality out of them. But what's critical about this is that they work together, especially your own personal note-taking and ideas, the way you capture information from other sources, like articles and books and videos, and the way you bring your thinking in spontaneous moments, quickly entering them, then having that flow along with the different sources of information you're collecting ideas from, and it all flows into these topic categories, these super hubs of the ideas in the areas of exploration that are most valuable to you for everything else in the other parts of your system and just your life in general. So the ultimate flow is from your own thinking and other sources into these knowledge lab categories, and then you're building out these incredible, powerful resources that you can draw from in any aspect of your life. And the mere act of creating the knowledge lab categories where you're distilling information from articles and books and your own thoughts and your conversations and your reflections, everything coming in quickly and efficiently from different entry points, and then organized. The process of creating that makes you understand it better. It makes you internalize it. It makes you connect dots across the board. It's incredibly powerful to have all this information coming in and being able to organize it so efficiently and then having your notes and ideas pop up in the right context and having the most valuable nuggets extracted from all the media that you're consuming and then organizing it in one place and then having this growing like a living organism on each topic that matters to you. That is a gold mine and it's just growing and becoming more powerful and more valuable over time. And that's why I call them vaults because vaults are places you store valuable things in their private spaces. So this is a private collection of your most valuable ideas and the most valuable insights you've gleaned from other sources. And then ultimately the most valuable connection of different ideas all organized together and growing and expanding and becoming more and more valuable over time. This is how you get smarter, both the process of curating these different vaults and then the process of organizing, designing, and synthesizing it in the Knowledge Lab itself. And in the Knowledge Lab, what you've organized there is pretty much ready to go in any output form that you're interested. If you want to write newsletter or articles, if you want to do videos, if you want to give a presentation, if you want to bring new ideas to a meeting, if you want to impress your boss with some new thinking or an organized structure on how a topic can be understood or explored. Anywhere you need to express ideas in any form, this knowledge lab that's pulling from all these different sources is the ultimate resource for you to do that. And it'll make you look smarter, it'll make you actually be smarter, and it's just a vehicle for learning on a level that I've never seen before I had such a system in place. So I'm excited to share this with you and in the next several videos we're going to go deeper into each of these categories so you can understand fully how to build it. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below or join us on Twitter for the expanded conversation. And hit like if you found this valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.